Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beard, taking a look at the feature race at Santa Anita on Sunday. It's the spring fever for Calbreds. It's a hundred grander going three quarters of a mile. And race number eight is a field of six, but it's a competitive group. And not only do these Calbreds, these are good Calbreds. Daddy's Ruby, the three, Big Pound, the two. Noses apart in the grade one La Brea on opening day. Yeah, listen, maybe it's just that easy, Dan. Most races aren't, but maybe this one is. It's just as simple as 2-3 or 3-2 who just photoed in a grade one, and now they take a step back in class. Last time they ran, Daddy's Ruby shook loose. Big Pond came at her, just missed. We take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector. Daddy's Ruby expected to make the front. Big Pond chasing in a situation that favors front runners. Is Frankie going to go after Daddy's Ruby with Big Pond this time? It's the key to the race. We'll see how they decide to play it. I mean, if this is how the race sets up, how the pace projector has it everybody else in this field is in huge trouble they're just not going to be able to beat these horses I, I have to believe there's at least a chance that the two is not sitting this time and it's going to go after the three and they start to the race if the two and the three battle that number one scary fast ride could be in the catbird seat and it looks like this mare is slowly improving very lightly raced for a five-year-old only six starts she looked good in this first level allowance she cruised up to them on the outside with a four wide sweep and she's gonna put it away at odds on mike so it looks like she's getting better. Maybe she falls into a good trip, and her buyers are not too far off the top ones. Oh, this right, the figure she got for this race puts her squarely in the mix. She doesn't change leads in the stretch, and she did get a perfect trip in this race. Um, so I don't know. We'll see if she can, you know, take a little bit of a step forward here and maybe fall into that same kind of a trip. I wasn't sold on her, but she ran fine last time. Third start off the summer vacation for the two big pond who was second off the layoff against open first level allowance competition. And then in the La Brea last time out, Daddy's Ruby had the lead. Big Pond made a move and a hard chase in between horses, and she kept on fighting Daddy's Ruby all the way to the wire. Just missed another stride she might have gotten her. Another stride, I think she was gonna get her there. I don't know what took her so long to sort of kick it into gear there. Maybe the, the pace just really worked against her because that pace was not fast. Um, but it's not like she had a ton of ground to make up there. And I don't know. I'm, I'm conflicted about the performance because I know that she almost won a grade one last time. I didn't see her excuse necessarily. Here's Daddy's Ruby, who is four, four, four lifetime on dirt. Three for three lifetime on dirt. And in the synthetic, she's four for four on the main track. She got to the lead here and she got away on the back stretch and that might have been the key she's got the lead big ponds on the outside daddy's ruby's digging big ponds coming after her. it's going to be an exciting finish and there's nobody in the picture uh, yeah it's going to be very late uh when big pond finally starts to get to this filly at the end but it's just a little too late for her unfortunately this horse uh daddy's ruby had all the best of it early she hangs on at the end um to get the job done but that was seven for a long time and this one's six and maybe that's a little bit better for her um, the, the problem I had with her, not only did she win that one with an easy trip, the, the win two starts back. I mean, they just handed her the lead. She walked um, and she got away from that. I, I have no idea how good she is. Rose Dawson, the number four, moves turf to dirt. And I wonder if that last race, the Sunshine Millions, her first start of the year, was basically just a prep run to perhaps set her up for this start. She's okay on turf. I think she's a little yeah, yeah. bit better on the dirt. My one issue with her is sometimes she's a little bit slow from the gate and going six. Maybe that means if she does break slow, she'll be outrun. She's going to need a break or two. Going to need a little help, I think, if she's going to win this race. But I think it's possible that she gets the setup that she's going to require, which she didn't in this race. This is a race two starts back where the horse on the lead absolutely walked on a slow pace. She has plenty left through the stretch. And Rose Dawson just can't really make any ground on her, but she's very game to get second. Uh, D'Amato, we'll see. She's good on turf and she can go a little longer. D'Amato has sprinted her on dirt four times. Two wins, two seconds. She's run well in all of those races. She needs a little pace. Now, while Rose Dawson might be better on dirt, Rose Maddox might prefer turf and synthetic, although she's been consistent throughout her career. 16 of 20 on the board, including a win in the aforementioned Sunshine Millions, Philly and Mare turf going down the hill. The question is, is she as effective on the main track? Yeah, her dirt races aren't terrible, but it does feel like she's a better turf horse than I didn't. She's five to two on the morning line. I really didn't want to take that kind of a price on her in this race. All dialed in was third in the Betty Grable back in 2022. She's raced sparingly of late. Uh, she ran last time out off of a lengthy layoff. And I guess all things considered, she ran a fine third in the Bear Fan. That race, of course, being contested on synthetic. She's done well on dirt. She has. She's pretty consistent. It's probably her best surface. She still hasn't run that one race, though, that's really going to make her uh, a, a big threat to the favorites, I don't think. Let's take a look at our top picks for the spring fever. You're hoping there's some hitting. 
And if there is between the two and the three, it sets things up for the four, and the four will be a good price. Yeah, I just thought there was at least a little chance that that happens. So maybe she's a playable price in here when she gets the right setup. I'm thinking Big Pine can sit just a little bit closer to Daddy's Ruby attack and maybe turn the tables this time around with Frankie Notoria aboard. 4231 for Mike, 2316 for me. Spring Fever at Santa Anita on Sunday. Good luck.